Welcome back, everyone, to the Zero K Grand Finale 2018 tournament. I remain your host, Dominic Shadapur, and I remain here alongside Google Frog as we go to the semifinals, or the first semifinals. It's going to be between Steel Blue and Gorda, starting on Seth's Ravine. So, Hello, Google Frog, I've been found what do you though. think of this? Because. Is it running? Or are we setting up? We're up, we're up, we're on. Oh, wait, Seth's Ravine's the Stargard map. Never mind. No, it's not. Isn't this a StarCraft map? Well, this was a StarCraft 2 map that they turn into... Well, at any rate, it's it's a map. It's a rather odd high economy map. It's a remake of a very old map because the very old map broke. Oh, right, because of the fog. Although this has still got the fog, so I guess they managed to fix it. To... Yeah, they remade it and fixed the fog. Cool. Possibly some other things. Nice. Not the mech's placement, though. This is really bizarre mech's placement. I think I'll see is... if they changed it. Hmm? I'll see if they changed the mech's placement. Yeah, because um, this looks like it's just total annihilation stuff that's automatically turned into the 0k stuff and not really set up with the 0k Lewis spots. Although it does have the 0k start spots, so I don't know. Yeah, I think this, the mech's placement looks original. Like, if I remember playing this map eight years oh, ago. Oh, yeah, it, it does look right. It's just weird. No, it's sort of clustery. It's quite nice. It's certainly different. Although I like Meme Quizzer's thing. I've seen it from the loading screen, but never seen it in game. Yeah, because it's a pretty map that wasn't really playable for a while. I mean, it is pretty. I'll give it that. Wow, that's. It does look sort of StarCrafty, actually. But it was yeah. made quite a bit before the sort of StarCrafting map theory. Right, out. yeah, things like Ravage and such. Well, you say map theory, I mean, Ravage is literally Zelnaga Caverns, but fair enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not made by the guy who sort of remade a few StarCraft maps. Yep, yeah. okay, that makes sense. I think Akalin Wastelands is also another StarCraft map. But at any rate... Yeah, technically Fairyland is too. Is it? Which one? I don't remember seeing that one. I think it was Cloud Castle. Oh, but it was... okay, yeah, I wasn't playing I, I don't play much StarCraft now but I wasn't playing at all when that was I think it was here was, was that part of the swarm that was in ladder I think it was in StarCraft 1 but Akronim said he didn't want to make it like a standard sort of StarCrafty thin ramp map but use the same kind of approach the same oh. kind of design philosophy behind Cloud Castle oh uh, okay yeah and if it's a StarCraft 1 map it's one from way later than when I stopped playing anyway Back to this game, where we're not playing any StarCraft maps whatsoever. They just vaguely look like them because of the cliffs. Gold is going for the Jump Bot Factory, and Steel Blue going for the Cloaky Bot Factory. Good luck, Steel Blue, because puppies are going to be a problem. Actually, ooh, good micro from Steel Blue. Getting rid of that puppy well, for free. actually, that was attack move. Up a ramp, so the puppy didn't get in range. Right. But, I mean, just taking advantage of the fact and that... And the Blade had more range. range. Right, because of the ramp adding the range. That would make yeah. sense. I think Glaive does um, slightly outrange Puppy, though, doesn't it? It does. Oops. So, but it, it probably does. I'm checking right Gorda now. Gorda has just gone Yes, barely, by 15 Elmo. Completely greedy. Still yeah. blue is pretty greedy. Constable. I mean, the thing is, wasn't the joke about the Constables that by buffing the Constables, we buff Gorda? Like, it's Gorda's suggestion to buff the Jump Bot Factory? Because they're playing all the Jump Bots yeah. and a mass Constable Although and Jump Bots. Although it's very, a very minor amount of damage. Oh, yeah, it's nothing. I mean, really, the slow is always the key thing. Yeah. Also, I'm curious, Anarchist going about out macroing Gorda. You beat Gorda by out macroing them. Like, at least in my experience, watching, especially, say, Gorda versus Drone, there's this clear distinction where Drone is a super macro oriented player, and Gorda focuses much more on keeping the units alive. So, I would say if you want to win against Gorda, that out macroing is basically your only hope. But because... Steel Blue has not out macroed got it. No, no, they haven't. Well, that's just really Drone's thing. Drone's good at the macro. True. Sort of that's his strength. That is very true. But I'm just thinking more so that it's Gorda. They have pretty good. They have pretty good macro, but they, they have good macro. It's just that their micro is their standout quality, I find. Like keeping the units alive, yes, yes. being attentive to stuff, that is always what makes Gorda just push that little bit ahead. 
Are you sure this isn't a StarCraft map? I feel like this is like a StarCraft 2, one of the original ladder maps, but... I think this map might have come out before StarCraft 2. I don't know. It feels like something that wasn't like Wings of Liberty, like in the beta ladder. Because that was 10 years ago. Like, bear in mind, that, was, that wasn't recent. Or nine years ago. Like, 0k didn't exist at the time. Anyway, that's... I'm getting distracted. What really matters now is Steel Blue wiping out as much as they can of gold as... Well, okay, not really wiping out as much as they can, because they can't really wipe out much. These constables are kind of difficult to deal with, thanks to that slow, as mentioned before. So, at this point, I'm curious if we're going to see Reavers coming out here, but no, we're seeing Phantoms instead. Just... Okay, just... Deal with them as you would moderators. Just kill the constables with phantoms. I actually kind of like that. That's that's neat. That is a neat little idea. Curious to see how it's going to work out, but I think it'll work out fairly well. Well, it's a very thin map, so yeah. So both have, have no skipped problem. the raider phase, understandably, and now they're going straight into tough pushes. And I really would like to see a few slings. Two or three slings would really help. With in this situation for turret pushing. Yeah, it looks like we are not going for slings, we're going for phantoms instead. Like, same idea, long range. Phantoms are quite but, good. But yeah. they're really inefficient against mass, like Lotus. I kind of expect we're going to see the phantoms used to get rid of the constables, but again, kind of inefficient. Also, it's assuming we actually... Dis I think it's going to be won by whoever figures out to expand to the sort of wings on the side of the map. Hmm. Or maybe by pushing the center, but it seems a bit bogged down. I don't like these glaives. They should be something like Ronin. Maybe even Knight. I think Knight. I would go with Knight personally. Less affected by the slow and more able to... I think... I can't remember if Knight's a splash. I feel like they don't, but still, it would help push through. Just have an EMP for some... for even single target. But, hey, at least the Phantoms are able to help keep that center under control. So there is that. Uh, got it switched into gunships, which makes plenty of sense. If he gets that in a surprising way, it'll be really powerful. Yeah, it looks like they're going for about a dozen Nemesis. On top of expanding over to the southwest with basically no opposition from Steel Blue. Like, Steel Blue has no idea whatsoever. Yeah, Steel Blue's still doing the center, but... Hasn't quite figured out that Goda is just pulled back and is giving it up. I mean, I like the fact that Goda's doing that. They're they're playing the smart. Uh, they're moving around now. They may spot the Nimbuses with this. Oof. I don't know. Goda's playing it careful. They're playing the Nimbuses really close to the chest. I mean, it's dangerous. The Glaives might be able to spot it, but I kind of doubt it. I think that the Glaives... At best, they'll be Two able to spot it. Two Phantoms actually killing Nimbus. Oh, no. The Phantoms are... Oh! No, the Nimbuses have revealed themselves. They're going to go for it. That is Ooh, risky. Okay. I think Gorda's expecting they can fire or fly in between the Phantom reload time. But I don't know. This is Maybe not... he doesn't think he's not thinking about Phantoms. Maybe. Yeah, Nimbus well, is ahead of you. Or maybe they won't. I mean, the Phantoms aren't really going for it. Ooh, this is... I mean, one thing, though, is Nimbus does have a lot of spread on their shot, so they could probably just get the Phantom just by distance. Phantoms are they... bad at shooting up a bit. Clearly. Or at least bad at realizing shooting up is an option. Because they hit fine. It's just uh, What are they doing, though? They're wandering off naked. Oh, no, this glaives. Thing is, yeah. Goda has taken the sides and has an extra factory for the diversity it gives him. Yeah, at the same time, though, Steel Blue's not that far behind in terms of economy. It's just a matter of making sure they actually deal with the Air Force, which... I don't know. Blast Wings coming... Oh, no. Those Blast Wings? Looks like Blast Wings, It's not yeah. really an air switch at the moment. It's more of a mixed arms battle. Yeah, air support. Right. Throwing There's in no the surprise now. But still, the Blast Wings are doing a fine job. They should be able to spot out these Phantoms. Are they going... Yeah, they are going for it. Yeah. They know the Phantoms are around there somewhere, and they're going to spot them, and that's... That's the Nimbus is taking him out. I mean, I think one Nimbus is going to go down that's in the process, but that's value. 
that's too much value. That's probably the game. I think so too. Yeah, that that is. Steel that... Blue has a larger oh, army. Well, Steel Blue looks like they're going for a last. They're going for a last ditch shot from the looks of it. They have a bunch of glaives moving in. I think what they're planning on doing is rushing in, taking what damage they can, and if they can push Golda back a bit, knock out some of their economy. I think Steel Blue might have confidence they can get back in the game. I mean, Steel Blue's economy is not bad, but they did just it's, lose it's four worse. Cycles. They lost three thousand metal worth of already pushed back. Yeah, I think Steel Blue just seeded that. Like as it is, they they're not pushing in. They're letting go to build up. Like, I think Glaives is strong. There's just I no agree. space for Glaives here. Reaver, Ronin work fine, or Ronin Knight will work fine. We we're just talking about this slings earlier. and knights really. When the map gets dense enough. Yeah. I mean, the Glaives are coming in, trying to justify their existence, and it looks like there will be a jump off to the side here. Jump Savior Island. That's all this really seems to be for, but hey, it worked. That being said, the Glaives... Oh, they have to deal with the Blastwings. Blastwings and Puppies being the main issue here. If it weren't for that, the Glaives would have had no problem, but it is, and at the same time, Steel Blue losing their commander, losing all that storage and the money that was, or the metal that was in it, on top of the economy. I don't know where Steel Blue is planning on going with this, because... This is still game one. Like, if Steel Blue decides to throw it and save their energy, move on to game two, pick a favorable map, I, they're not out of the tournament yet. No, they're not. They can pick a nice map. Because right now, like, they are very far behind. Gota is at about double their economy. Gota is 3,000 metal above on attrition. Steel Blue can't really hold an army together. The only upside is that Steel Blue has a lot of anti here, but the puppies are making short work of that. So I really don't see much beyond... I don't know, like... Well, the Reaver. Okay, we got that. And the Reaver... Nice thing about the Reaver I was trying to mention before is that it does get rid of puppies. That's something Knight wouldn't really be able to deal with. Knight could tank the puppies, but it wouldn't be able to kill the puppies. So a few Reavers in front of a Knight... Knight Sling setup, I could see working out fairly well. Same time, though. Mask Glaive over to the southwest. This actually might work. It will work. We'll get rid of the expansion. The Blastwings will stop it after it's done. But it got rid of the expansion, at least. At great cost. I don't know, but killing those glaives was pretty effective. Yeah, like I said, at great cost. That was a Pyrrhic victory on Steel Blue's part. Okay, I've looked it up. Seth's Ravine is from November 2010. Okay. So, I'd have Which to look through... Which is after StarCraft, but... Yep. I don't think it was made as a StarCraft map. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. It just looks so familiar, but at the same time... I it looks familiar because it's in a low screen. Well, that too. But I mean, more it looks familiar because it's got that low bit in the center. It's, it's designed like you could put this into StarCraft and it would play reasonably well. Yeah. It wouldn't play great, but it would play reasonably well. So you had to spread those gremlins out. They're all taking the AOE. You spread them out and dance them, and the Nimbuses really have their DPS go down. But on this map, is that even large enough? I feel like this map, especially where that fight uh, was being taken... I could spread them a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But I feel like Steel Blue is just kind of fighting in disadvantage unless they get heavy single anti-air. Mm, I think the switch is really important on this map because it's quite defensible. So you're going to have some greedy economy and then you're going to have to mix things up. Well, Steel Blue is looking to make that greed happen thanks to Reclaim more than anything else. Like, Reclaim supported by the Thresher. So they got something, at least. I have a way of maintaining some economy right now as they're taking out some of Steel Blue's production, but at the same time, I'm not really sure what Steel Blue can do to push forward from here based on what they're building. We talked about options they could have before, like Night Sling, but, they aren't, but we're not seeing Steel Blue actually build that, so I'm not sure where Steel Blue is planning on going with this. Our hypotheticals are just that, hypotheticals. They're not actually what's happening. And this Jack getting rid of the Threshers, yeah. the Nimbus will be able to get in, and that should be... That'll be it. I think Steel Blue, they've got nothing. They've got no army after that. If they don't throw in the towel, I'm not... I think they're just holding on way too long. Yeah, there are twice as many Nimbuses in value than Steel Blue. Oh, no, three times than Steel Blue has in army. So that's, like, al like already. Like we said before, the loss of all those early Phantoms, 3,000 metal worth of Phantoms, is already such a big deal. And at this point, it's... Yeah, it's just too much. I'd like to see what would have happened with Night Sling. I could see that working out reasonably well. Or Knight's with some Reaver support for the puppies. But, alas, we're not going to see that. Uh, Knight can do with puppy. Knight can take 
a lot of puppies to the face and has a lightning cannon. Right. It's actually quite thinking, good against them. Yeah, but if you throw in two or three Reavers, you don't have to lose as many knights. Like, just a little, like, you don't lose any knights. Really. With, like, if they're bringing, like, three or four dozen puppies at your knights? Well, maybe then. But right. they've spent quite a few. The thing is that you lose the knight sort of just in passing. Sorry, you lose Reavers in passing because they have such lower health than knights. Oh, I the see. The gets yeah. you. Whereas the knights just sit there and you repair them. And then ideally, you get a cloaker and just rush into a defense with that. And it's good. Okay, I can see that. You can even put a tick in with them because they, they are hard the to MP? stun with ticks. Yeah, they, they take the MP. Although, on the other hand, against jump bots, your main threat at that point is going to be Jax, which would also tank EMP. Far better, in fact. Though I suppose you mix the ticks and the knights, and the Jax would get stunned out quickly enough. No, no, you mix in one tick. One imp. Right. And then it just makes them... It makes it easy for the knights to use their lightning guns. Yeah, so Baron, at that point, Jax is still kind of low. This is a small micro... Wait, we're on... Oriented. Yeah, possibly Baron, jump oh, on map. I, don't know, I mean, Baron is an interesting map because it's one of those maps that, yeah, it's small and micro oriented and all that, but it's also a map with that big center trench that tends to bog down. So I'm curious how this is going to go for how the players are going to approach this because I'm expecting the way Steel Blue is playing, we're going to be likely seeing a lot of defenses on that ridge. Oh, it's already a good tournament. Hmm? It's a good tournament when the um, the winner has lost a game. Oh, yeah. And that has been the case. Yeah, so Steel Blue... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we're in the quarterfinals, and we're actually getting a lot of 2-1s. Yeah, Steel Blue already lost a game against 400. God, he lost a game against Kingstad. Yeah, and Drone lost a game against Randy, and... Let's see what happens to Darks around an Anarchid. We'll get to that semifinal afterwards, but... Actually, it's probably... Oh, well, Shaman's watching. Shaman could let them know. That I want to watch both semifinals, especially given how fast the game is, the tournament's going. Like, this is a remarkably speedy tournament. Yeah. Right. I'll poke him. All right, so we're on to game two on Baron, and this is going to be interesting because Baron is one of those maps that I mentioned before... It could get bogged down. It could get quite quick. Go to going for jump bots, and we have Cloakybot coming for Steel Blue. So a rematch of the matchup we had before, but now on a much wider map. So I'm guessing we're going to be seeing a lot more use of Glaive actually pan out. Steel Blue going mass Glaive last game, but that didn't work out because Gold was basically able to take advantage of the terrain, take advantage of loads of puppies, kind of kept bottlenecking all the Glaives and making it impossible for them to actually do what they wanted to do rating wise. But on this map, there's yeah. a lot more room to do that. This is the opposite of last map. Everything can go everywhere, as in you can go up these cliffs. They're more like hills. They There's low are... metal. You're not going to expect a switch before any raiding. There's going to be raiding right off. The only similarity is taking the three mexes on the sides. The corners is still quite good and sort of determines who wins, in a sense. Yeah, it is five metal per second, but given how famine this map is, yeah, it's really needed. I like, think absolutely. Steel Blue is just running across the map. I think they go for a quick win, and yeah. And trying to end it. They're doing. They're trying to pull what Kingstead did last time, but without using Redback. But instead using Mass Probably Glaive. God, it knows it's happening. So it's going to get some turrets. Yeah, go to. Yeah, they had the radar up front. They they can see it. Like it's entirely. Entirely line of sight. Seven glaives against Commander. No, this doesn't look good for the glaives. Not with Beam Laser Commander. Used to be four glazer would kill a commander, but with beam laser, eight oh, might. Oh, a commander, two constables and two turrets, two lotuses. That's not. Not with eight glaives. No, no, that's not going to happen. Even ten glaives, which we have, and the moderator is so, that just, that's nine glaives with the moderator there because the moderator kills one instantly. Oh, the constables jumped up. Oh, Steel that is should risky. really have a um a lotus. Sorry, a radar tower. 
I mean, if they did, they would have gone in south and been able to take stuff out. But at the same time, Steel Blue's not building anything. They used in all their storage. Why are they not building stuff? They still get some reinforcements here. It's not like it'd be impossible. Ooh. But it looks like Steel Blue. No, Kenny. they're going north. They're running into the moderator. It's okay. The moderator is down, but they're stow is the glaives. Steel Blue's commander is going to go down. Gorda is going to be able to win this if Steel Blue doesn't nail it with those last couple rockets. And unfortunately, the Lotus support. That is it. Steel Blue Ooh, throws in the towel. Two percent health. Yeah, that. If. Oh man, if Steel Blue's commander had gone back just a little bit to get out of the range of the Lotuses and just nailed Gota's commander with the rockets, that might have turned around. It was still really close. I mean, cheese games always are. But, ah, that was... That could have gone either way. But at this point, Gota does in fact take Maybe it. Maybe the Glaive should have even gone for the commander. Where it jumped yes, to. they should have. The moderator, after I got the first shot off, the moderator wasn't going to be relevant to the rest of the fight, just how fast the fight was going to was gonna go. The moderator would eventually kill the commander if there were no glaives left to kill it. True. Like the moderator could have been a problem, but the commander could have Steel Blue could have plopped down a um, a lotus to fend off the moderator. Or at least to distract it. Like throw a bunch of nanoframes down there. Yeah, I, I think Gotti would have nanoframes. microed his only unit. That's true. I think he would have microed that. That is a fair point. But at any rate, Golda taking the first, taking that match, going on to the grand finals against well, one of three winner. people. One of three people, Darkstron, Anarchid, or Drone, are currently in the running to fight Golda in the finals. And I honestly don't know which one it's going to be because at this point, um, Anarchid and Darkstron are on their first game. They're on Quicksilver again. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to that and then do another intro bit because. That may that makes it easier. <laughs> 